Hi guys, Miss Francis here to talk about the genetics of viruses. So viruses kind of defy science's definition of living versus non-living. Viruses don't follow the central dogma. They don't take DNA and transcribe it into messenger RNA and then um, translate it into ultimately proteins. Um, so viruses are unique. Now, despite their uniqueness and their differences in appearances, basically viruses are protein and nucleic acids. So the protein essentially encapsulates the um, nucleic acid, where the nucleic acid contains the virus's genetic information, and that can come in the form of RNA or DNA, and the protein envelops that nucleic acid to protect it and to aid in um, the attachment of the virus to the host cell. So if you look down here, you see the adenovirus, that's your common cold. Now. Viruses can infect host cells in various ways. A virus can be um, engulfed by the host cell. The host cell will do endocytosis, thinking that the virus is something that it needs, or the membrane of the virus will fuse with the membrane of the host cell, or the glycoproteins on the surface of the virus will attach themselves to the host cell and then inject the DNA into the host cell. Here's a picture of the influenza virus, the flu, which mutates from year to year. Um, now, the most complex capsid, which is that protective protein coating, are found in viruses that infect bacteria called bacteriophages or just phages. I know you can pronounce it bacteriophage or phage, but I say phage. Um, anyway, this should seem familiar because think back to Hershey and Chase. In their experiment, they used T2 bacteriophages to show that DNA is, in fact, the transforming agent. So let's take a look at exactly what a virus does. So a virus um, attaches itself to the host cell, the DNA gets inside. Now that virus hijacks the mechanics of the host cell. The virus uses that host cell's DNA polymerase to do replication and it uses the host cell's RNA polymerase to do protein synthesis. And then the um, virus basically reassembles itself and then exits that host cell to find a new host cell to hijack. When we're looking at bacteriophages, the bacteriophage attaches itself to the bacteria, in this example E. coli, and injects its DNA into the bacteria. The um, phage's DNA takes over the machinery of the bacteria using the bacteria's DNA polymerase and RNA polymerase to do replication and protein synthesis. The phage basically reassembles itself <clears throat> and causes the bacterial cell to lyse, to burst, releasing 100 to 200 phages. Now, um, viruses can take two avenues as far as ways that they can um, persist in bacteria. They can either enter into the lytic cycle or they can enter into the lysogenic cycle. So here's the lysogenic cycle and here's the lytic cycle. The lytic cycle is synonymous to having full-blown AIDS, whereas the lysogenic cycle would be son synonymous to having, um, to being like HIV positive. So let's investigate the lytic cycle first. <clears throat> In the lytic cycle, the phage attaches itself to the host cell and injects its DNA into the bacteria. That phage DNA then circulates. It takes over the um, bacteria's machinery, creates new um, phage DNA and synthesizes proteins, assembles itself back into many phages, causes the bacterial cell to lyse, releasing those now re, uh, newly assembled phages. Or the, the um, phage can take a different pathway where the phage still attaches itself to the host cell, injects its DNA, the phage DNA still circulates, 
But now the phage DNA integrates itself into the bacterial um, genome, becoming what's called a prophage. And now when that bacterium reproduces, it reproduces normally, but a copy of the prophage um, gets transmitted to its daughter cells. And then ultimately after many cell divisions, you've got a colony of bacteria infected with prophage. But what the problem is, is that occasionally the prophage um, will exit the bacterial chromosome. Let's say there's some sort of environmental factor such as um, exposure to ultraviolet radiation or there's a, a certain chemical that affects the bacteria where the prophage will exit the bacterial chromosome and then go into the lytic cycle. Now, not every time that a virus infects a host cell does the virus want to cause that host cell to lice, ultimately killing the host cell. Why? Because that virus wants that host cell's machinery, so it doesn't want to kill that, virus, uh, that host cell. HIV is an example of a retrovirus. HIV is the virus that causes AIDS. Now a retrovirus is unique because instead of going from DNA to RNA, it goes from RNA to DNA using an enzyme called reverse transcriptase. So here we've got our HIV molecule. It has um, two um, identical RNA strands as well as two copies of reverse transcriptase. So let's see how HIV works. Well, here we have HIV entering the host cell. Using reverse transcriptase, the viral DNA is, um, uh, the HIV uses reverse transcriptase to create an RNA-DNA hybrid from viral DNA. This is sometimes called cDNA or complementary DNA, which then ultimately creates DNA. And then the HIV virus uses that host cell. In the case, this would be a white blood cell because that's the cell that HIV invades. Um, uses that white blood cells machinery to do um, DNA replication as well as protein synthesis. The HIV molecule reassembles itself and then the new HIV leaves the um, host cell. So in recent years, several very dangerous emergent viruses have risen to prominence. So following HIV, um, every single year you've got new strains of the flu virus, and the flu virus mutates extremely quickly. So that's why every year you get a new strain. Um, Ebola is a virus that we are probably familiar with because it causes such insane um, issues in people, hem hemorrhagic fevers, where you basically bleed from every orifice. A uh, more recent example of an emerging virus is the Zika virus, which causes encephalitis in um, third trimester babies who are exposed to Zika. Next video, we'll be talking about bacterial genetics.